Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer Scheich, and I'm pleased to introduce you to um, two great um, leaders in our industry um, in agriculture that are going to talk to you guys today and talk to us about how we can um, cut through some of the clutter and distractions and be more efficient in our jobs. Um, when we were working on putting topics together, this is one that kind of rose to the top for many of us because no matter um, if you are working from home or if you are working from an office, we all struggle with distractions and clutter, things that just kind of take us away from what we need to be doing. And I think that this is the perfect time of the year to talk about it because I don't know about you guys, you know, Cyber, Cyber Monday week, there's just so much stuff going on. Um, so many pressures of things that we need to do in these holiday seasons um, on top of all of our demands at work. You know, how do we do it to the best of our ability and stay sane while we do it? And so um, I'm going to let our speakers introduce themselves a little more fully before they begin speaking here in just a minute. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to a couple quick things. If you've never done one of our coffee and collaboration chats before, I just wanted to point out that in the bottom left hand corner is a little chat bubble and if you click on that that will allow you to type in questions or see some of the conversation that is happening on the side so please feel free to ask questions at any time um, at the end of their presentations we'll start asking those questions so please be thinking of them because what really makes these chats useful are the questions that you all um, contribute and bring to the conversation too um, we love, and if there's something that you want to say, great idea, or if you want to add a thought or two, feel free to do that because this is supposed to be an opportunity for you guys to engage as well. So we want to make sure you know about that. Um, there is a microphone button at the bottom of your screen. And if you're not speaking and you want to mute that, that would be great. That just helps cut out that background noise um, so our speakers have a little bit of a clearer a way to communicate with us. So if you have any questions, type them in the column and I'll be watching that. And with that, um, I would like to get this kicked off with Christy Stevens. She is a marketing project manager with Biozyme Inc. and she is going to um, get things started for us today. Christy, could you share a little about yourself first? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be participating. Um, I am from Texas. I live in a little bitty town. Y'all probably heard before we got started. Haskell, um, there's about 3,000 people here. So uh, I love that we can do what we do from pretty much anywhere. Um, and so I am a graduate from Texas A&M University. I was an animal science major. Um, and like many, I I had plans to go to vet school, worked for a vet for a long time, and um, decided that wasn't what I wanted to do, didn't know what to do, so I went to grad school. Uh, while I was in grad school, I started working for my friend Jackie Lackey, um, it was Jackie Townsend at the time, and um, she had started a company that y'all might have heard of called Encore Visions, it's a marketing firm, um, and so I just lucked into my calling, I guess, at that point. So I um, I was with her from the very beginning, um, and so I had many, many roles with that company. Um, I also, uh, we started a couple companies while I worked for her. One of them was Drive Magazine. Um, the other one was Unit Visions that I ran for her. Um, it was a company that did the same kind of marketing, but for Mary Kay sales directors. And so um, I learned a lot about a very different industry at that point in time. Um, but kind of the common thread in all of those roles that I had with Encore um, was that I worked as a project director and trafficking coordinator. So I was kind of the person that, um, you know, kept things going, kept things moving. Um, I, they called me the systems girl. I always um, helped us with systems that just made us more efficient. Um, and then uh, in January, we became the in-house marketing team for Biozyme. Um, who was one of our biggest customers at the time. And so I've kind of transitioned into that same role um, here with Biozyme. So go ahead and trance. So I'm going to talk about systems and how um, they make us better. And one of, I think systems can sometimes be a scary word <laughs> to many people. Um, but I always think of systems as really just a standard way of working through your day um, and with your team. And um, I think that we uh, sometimes forget that we have a team, 
um, whether we're a freelancer working from home or we you know work with a marketing team like I do um, you know no matter what your team is made up of the people that you're working with you, maybe your customers um, if you're working freelance for a company the people in that company are part of your team um, so no matter how you're working you have a team that you've got to communicate with um, and that you know you've got to make sure that everything kind of stays moving and um, that you're working through all of that effectively. So I think that that's kind of how I want to preface this is that no matter um, who you're working with, you are working with the team. And so why um, why I think that systems are important, the number one thing is communication. Uh, and this is this thing right here is something that I pretty much tell anyone that I work with um, or new that starts with our companies. Um, if you feel like you're communicating too much, you're probably finally communicating enough. Um, and I think that it's, it's sometimes hard for us to um, realize uh, how much we are and aren't communicating because we live in an age now where I think we feel like that's all we're doing is talking to people um, when, in, when in reality that's probably not the case. So I think systems just make us better communicators. Um, when we have systems, um, you know, things happen too. And so I've always worked um, – no matter what role that I've had in the companies I've worked with, um, we've always worked um, with people remote, so not everybody was in the same office, and we've always had far more opportunity than we've had people to meet that opportunity. Um, so it just it makes us better when um, we have a place that we can you know put these tasks. There's a way that they can flow through from person to person and make sure that we're we're not missing the things that we have to get done. Um, you know, systems keep you centered and focused. They help you um, stay on the task at hand. Um, and sometimes that system is simple and sometimes it's a program. Um, we have a program that we put everything into. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more um, further down. But uh, when things get put into our system or get put into our programs that manage what we do day to day, they just happen. Um, so I, I think that that's probably one of the most important things for me um, as a project manager is that things are happening. And then I think that the third reason that I like systems so much is they really allow us to see more clearly um, what's going on. And, and so I think that a lot of times, I mean, you're getting email, you're getting texts, you're getting phone calls, um, you start here and then you get pulled away here. Um, and I feel, I feel like some days, even with them, I'm just chasing my tail. Um, so when you've got, you know, things kind of all over, it's really hard to know um, what's happening, what you're spending your time on, um, maybe where you're spending your time where you shouldn't be, or you're not spending, you know, time in enough places that are, um, have bigger opportunity for your role or your business. Um, so I think that it's really important when we've kind of got some structure to what we do, we can kind of see um, more clearly where we're going. So um, the next thing is kind of when, when we use systems. And so one of, um, not everything kind of falls into a system, but I think um, it's very easy when a task is repetitive. So if it's something that you do more than once, um, that you and your team communicate on more than once, um, or anything that you really just can't miss, um, th those are what you need to put into to this to a system. I think um, it's very, like we talked about, I mean, techno technology makes everything feel urgent. I mean, you've got notifications coming in left and right um, and everybody vying for your attention. Uh, so when there's parts of your day that you can structure um, and kind of remove the noise, uh, that certainly makes, makes it not feel like you're always stressed and there's so much to do, so much to do when, when really a lot of it is probably not as urgent as it feels. Go ahead and advance the next slide. So this is, um, I really, really love this chart. This is from the book, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And um, most everything, I mean, everything that you do can fit into one of these four boxes. So important and urgent, important, not urgent, not important, but urgent, and not important, not urgent. Go ahead and advance. So when um, this is really how you should work through the things that fit in those boxes. So um, the 
where you can add systems to your life is the not important but urgent, really the stuff that has to get done but um, you know doesn't make or break the day. Um, the stuff that's not important and not urgent is stop doing is sometimes not realistic, but maybe it's something that you can delegate or you can bring some help in for. Um, and the stuff that lives in important and not urgent is really where we sh see growth, whether that's personally, um, for a company that you work for, for a company that you own, um, growth happens in the important and not urgent. Um, but I would say in the majority of our jobs, roles, time, home life, um, those are probably the things that get pushed to the side the most often. Okay, we can move to the next slide. So I wanted to talk about um, three areas in um, my daily work that I use systems um, in order to make me better and, tr and make things um, run smoother for us. So in my time um, in correspondence, and uh, correspondence now is you know email, social, text, just any way that, that people are communicating with you, and then your daily tasks. Okay. Um, oh. So one of the um, one of the places that I really try to work, um, I mean that I've really tried to work a system and how I go day to day is um, my time, and it's probably it's our most valuable resource and we seem to like have none of it. And so um, I try one of the things that I really try to do is brain dump regularly. Um, so much of what I have to do, whether it's work or personal, um, I have two young kids, you know, my husband, it, it's just, it all lives in my head. Um, so I try to do this on a weekly basis. You can do this first of the week, the end of the week. Um, it also makes, it's kind of like a sh stress relief. Like I feel like my shoulders get lighter when I sit down and brain dump because I've taken all of that, um, that information and, and just cut it out of my head. So what, a, what I um, describe as a brain dump is writing down everything that you have to do that's on your to-do list. So I do that, I like set a timer or try to give myself about 15 minutes. And I mean, you just write everything that you can think of, everything that's on your mental to-do list. You don't censor, you don't edit. Um, even if you feel like it's not important, you write it down. Um, doing that really, um, it, it really lifts a weight off. You just get it all on paper. Um, and then one of the things when I'm brain dumping that I try to do right away is if I have a daily task system for how that particular item should be handled. Um, one of the things that I do in my roles is I work with our area sales managers and our dealers on um, project marketing projects that they need done. And so a lot of times um, somebody will call me, they need something done, I've talked to them about it, I have some notes, but it's at that point in time, it's never made it into our project management software for whatever reason. So those kinds of things that are sitting in my head, I instantly get into our systems so that I make sure that you know it doesn't come a week down the road and we've never started it. Um, so anything that's in um, that can be into a system needs to get there quickly. And then the rest of those things, um, you can kind of take and work into those four boxes and figure out. Um, you know, if, if it's something that you need to handle, if it's something that someone else can handle, um, and, and just kind of relieve yourself of, um, of the burden of that mental to-do list. The other part of, um, you know, brain dumping and, and organizing your time is then scheduling how you're gonna work through the things that you have to do. Go to the next slide, please. And so this is an example of um, a scheduled time. This was my, um, this is how I worked when I was um, working as the project director for Encore. So I had, um, we had some key clients that I was in charge of, um, and those people are purple. So that was really where the majority of my time was spent every week. Um, I scheduled time to call them, meet with them, work specifically on their projects, think about um, the things that I needed to do to advance their businesses. Um, there, you know, I, then we also had other clients that I you know, had interaction with in some form or fashion, um, and so I scheduled time for those and, you know, as well. I scheduled meeting time, um, I scheduled email time, um, correspondence time. You, you can kind of see um, 
the scheduling aspect of my job was just taking projects and making sure that they were working through the systems that we had in place. Um, I scheduled time for content review, proofing, um, and then the blue uh, boxes were think time. So I think that um, one of the biggest uh, things that we probably all do is that we're so busy doing the things that we have to do that we don't have a lot of time to think about how we can improve um, our jobs, our companies, um, you know, so we, we scheduled time to actually think. And um, so I'll talk through some of the key pieces of, of my day. Um, correspondence was uh, is probably the hardest. And I know when we were preparing for this, um, Beth and Jennifer and I talked a lot about, I mean, you've got social media, you have email. Uh, you have all of these places that are vying for your attention and all of the notifications that we get just make everything feel so urgent. And so um, I think that having a way in which we choose to handle our correspondence is very important. Uh, one of the things that I really liked to practice is what, I, what we call one touch or I call one touch. Um, my email really serves as my my email inbox really serves as my to-do list. I try to keep, I mean, I have a personal goal to keep that below 50 emails at all times. Um, and if it starts creeping up, I get very nervous um, just because it, it's so uh, important and I'm handling what's coming in. And so um, I have time, you know, I don't, I never start my day with, with outside correspondence, whether that's social, email, um, you know, text messages from, from our team, um, I always have a list of things that I have to get done, and if you if I jump into that outside correspondence from the get go, uh, that interrupts my day because then I feel like well I've got to take care of them I've got to get what they need, um, and anybody that has a fire that needs to be put out generally calls, so I always try um, you know to to come in make sure that the things that I need to have happen are set to happen that day before I tackle email. And then once I'm ready to tackle that correspondence, um, I, I really work to read it and handle it. So whether that be giving a response, um, putting it into our project management software, asking the question that I need to ask and giving myself a follow-up task to make sure I get them answered um, so that when I'm done reading that email, it can either be filed or deleted accordingly. Same thing for our inbox on social, because I look at all of that. Um, and any text messages that are work related. The other thing that you could would improve everyone's email <laughs> inbox is to unsubscribe from everything. Uh, we get um, subscribed to things that we don't even realize we're subscribed to. And uh, when I first did this many, many, many months ago, um, it was baffling to me how long it took to get me unsubscribed from everything that I had to take off my list. Um, if you use Gmail, there is a program called Unroll Me uh, that you can sign up for. And what you can do is it will um, kind of find all of the um, subscription-based emails in your inbox, and it will base it'll give you a daily like digest of that information um, every day. So you can open that email, look through uh, the like what the emails are, and if there's any that you want to read, you can click on them. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, I know that a lot of people use Outlook, and I know Outlook has been working to um, get some of those same functionalities that Gmail has, um, or Microsoft has been. I know they're getting like a boomerang um, type program that they have in beta now. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, boomerang is also a really great tool. Um, that helps you manage email. So if you've got an email that's in your inbox that you you know can't answer right now or can't deal with, um, you want it out of your inbox, but you don't want to forget about it, you can um, set it up where it like boomerangs back into your inbox at a set period of time, um, which is really cool. And out, out what Microsoft is working on that, which I'm very excited about. Um, so I know that they're working on some of those same kinds of programs. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Yahoo has some, some very similar ones. So I would look into um, those kinds of email management programs that just make your inbox feel lighter. Um, and then notifications, I always feel like are really a personal decision. 
I've trained myself to not feel like Dory on uh, Finding Nemo, if you're familiar, where it's like shiny notification over here. Um, I've just trained myself to not let those distract me, and but where I can still see them, um, you know, as overseeing kind of our social stuff, it um, it's hard for me to not have those notifications in case there's something that really does need a quick response. Um, but if you're, uh, you know, I work with all types. I mean, I'm like very organized, e not easily distracted. Um, but we have a lot of creatives on our team that are easily distracted. So we kind of, um, I've helped kind of them each work within a daily system of what works best for them. And for many of our team, notifications are just difficult. Um, so we try to turn uh, turn those off as much as possible and and help keep them fo keep everyone focused. Um, I know that if um, you know if you've got if there's some notifications you need and some you don't, you can also turn them off for a set period of time, especially when you need to focus in. So, okay, next slide. And then um, the other area that this is probably really what people think about when they think about a system is a is a daily task system. Um, and I, I think that one of the things when uh, we start trying to come up with a normal way to handle our daily tasks um, that we get distracted on is it being fancy. Um, there's so many uh, things out there like fancy notebooks and cool calendars and, um, you know, all these softwares that cost so much money. Um, know that a that a workflow for your tasks does not have to be something that's super complicated. Um, it can be as simple as like a paper checklist for the things that you do all of the time, um, or it can be a project management program. One of the things, I mean, I'll tell you what we do personally at Biozone, we have a, a program called Asana, um, and it's, I've worked with probably four different programs at this point in my career. Um, and it's got to be the most simple one that we've that I've ever used. And so um, it, the you know, when for certain things I liked more complex, but I think from a team perspective, it's very easy. And so um, I mean, it's as simple as typing in your task and assigning it. Um, we've added some parameters to different things, and we have different groups for the different kinds of tasks that we manage. But at the end of the day, it's a very easy software. Um, that as kind of the project director, manager, I can see everything that's going on within our team. And our team has a place that they can come in every day and see what needs to happen. Um, and so, you know, we have a system, if, it, if an area sales manager or a dealer needs, um, needs a project done, they fill out a request and it comes into Asana and we start it. Um, we have a request for, um, if somebody needs work done within our team, needs graphic design done for something they're working on in their area. Um, so it's a, that has worked really great for our team. Um, prior to having uh, project management software, we did a lot of our um, systems on kind of a paper checklist. It was a paper that we printed out uh, when a new project needed to be started that everybody filled out. <laughs> and I know that that sounds so archaic now, but um, sometimes that the simplicity of that is really, um, really all you need. So I think within your day-to-day um, -day workflow, finding um, the places that you need to, you know, that there's set steps for what you do, whether that's, um, you know, putting together and putting up a blog post or, um, you know, working on a new, um, you know, piece that you're writing for somebody, having kind of those outline of this is what this looks like and this is how I work through it. Um, knowing, you know, some things to keep in mind when you're putting that together is that it should be easily repeatable and expandable. Um, it should enhance communication and effectiveness. So I think where um, we kind of get distracted with the more complex systems is that by the time you've done the system, you've made what you're doing so much harder that it's really hard to want to stick with it. So I think that, um, you know, enhancing that effectiveness in communication, you know, should be important. And then it, know that it's, it's going to change. So, um, you know, we change how we do things depending on adding new people to the team or um, adding a new role that we weren't doing before or um, just all kinds of things will, will alter um, how you work through your day. So being open to those changes. 
And then naturally there are drawbacks. So um, one of the biggest um, things to know is that adding systems to your day is change. And so it's change for you and it's change for any team that you're working with. Um, and that's okay. And it's going to take time and it takes practice um, to learn to work within those systems. Um, and, you know, we always say if it's not in a sauna, it's not going to happen. Um, and so it's really important that you know that for a system to be effective, you have to use it. Um, but when we use it, we are better. It makes us, um, I mean, we don't miss things. They happen. They're effective. Everybody's looped in. Uh, so they know what's going on and when to expect things and, and if there's a project delayed, why it's delayed. Um, so they, they really do make us better. I guess my last slide just said. <laughs> you can switch it, Jennifer. Um, and your, your team will eventually love it. So um, I never, any system we've ever put in place, um, we've gotten resistance at first naturally, but um, everybody has come to say, you know what, I, it, it, it's been better. Um, and knowing that as the person that puts those in place that I'm willing to listen to any challenges that they have and us, and us evolve the system to work for everybody, it, it definitely helps. So, Thanks, Christy. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to move on to Beth. Beth Gaines, would you take just a couple of minutes to introduce yourself and we'll let you get going here? Absolutely. Um, well, as... Uh, Somewhat of an old timer. Um, I've been in this business since 1991 um, when I graduated from K State, and I've had um, a number of different roles and a number of my my career path has um, has uh, taken some interesting turns. And um, probably the longest chunk of time, I served as the editor of Grass and Grain, which was um, I guess actually I should stop. My, my first job out of K State was. Um, I was the editor of the Texas Hereford Magazine, so I was in Fort Worth and doing a monthly slick publication for membership and working with their youth organization. Um, from there, I came, got to quote unquote come home, I'm a native Kansan, um, back to the Manhattan area and was the editor of Grass and Grain for 16 years, which is a weekly uh, farm and ranch, rural living, advertising, classifieds kind of publication. Um, and I did that for 16 years, and, and probably the uh, unique piece or, you know, that's fairly typical um, with those types of independent publications is that I was the Lone Ranger. So um, not only was I editing, looking for stories, taking the photos, doing the layout, um, selling ads occasionally, um, you know, so it was kind of, if it happened, it was because I did it, um, did have a small staff of ad sales folks and some folks that took care of the office invoicing um, and typesetting because originally when I started we were still waxing down the paper. I mean that was before things got electronic so really back in the dark ages but um, as far as content of the publication and from the editorial perspective if it happened, if it was there, it was because my hands touched it. So um, it was through those 16 years that much of my organization systems and approach to this work was really formed um, and, and established. From grass and grain, I went to uh, higher ed and I served for three years at Tabor College, which is a small liberal arts um, private school that's uh, owned by the Mennonite Church. And I was their director of communications. Um, and it was at this stop that I began to, to really work with organizations and teams um, and expanded my daily work um, to someone that, you know, was beyond just me. From there, I went to the Department of Agriculture in Kansas and served as the communications director. So again, um, my organization skills grew and, and working with teams and teams um, inside the organization and outside um, became an issue. I spent a short time at Red Angus um, as their communications director, and that was my first opportunity to work remote and work with other folks that were working remote. So, um, again, how I approached my work day and, and my challenges changed a little bit, and I picked up a few more things. Um, and then in June, I accepted the position of 
uh, executive director with the Kansas FFA Foundations. So have kind of left to some degree the communications world, but I'm back to being kind of a single um, single entity in my team, although I collaborate a lot with um, the executive secretary and the Department of Ed and obviously working with a lot of donors and a lot of organizations um, across Kansas that are supporting Kansas FFA. So um, back to more of a collaborative um, approach, if you will, um, to do there. Um, probably a, a piece that um, also factors into systems and getting stuff done and cutting out the clutter is um, I'm also a mom and at certain points and times of this um, was also working on the farm and so uh, you know my kids now are 21 19 and 15 um, so fitting their lives into what was going on um, at the time with my professional life was often a challenge. And I think uh, most of us can probably relate, all that said, is that a big part of our jobs, both professionally um, and in our home lives, is the fact that we're asked to multitask. I mean, there is a lot going on in our world every day. Um, from things that are happening at work, things that are happening at home. And most of the folks that I know, um, you know, in, in the ag communications world um, are pretty active in our community. So we volunteer, um, you know, whether you're a 4-H club leader or working for the FFA alumni or your church or your local county, county cattlemen's association. I mean, there's just, there is a lot on our plate. Uh, and through my path, I've observed that we are doing as communicators more and more and more and have more projects on our plate. And typically we're doing it with less staff. And part of that is the, the evolution of technology and things that we can, we can simply do more. But there is, um, we are getting more done and reaching more platforms, whether, you know, the advent and use of technology and social media, um, you know, you're doing your old job plus the new stuff on top of it. So we are doing more communications and more outreach each and every year, I feel, and we're doing it ourselves or, you know, with not necessarily um, a lot more staff as as Christy kind of mentioned that, you know, there's, there's more opportunity than we have the capacity to handle it. Um, and I think that's very true and why it's important to, to get stuff done and, and figure out how we can manage those workloads. And the business has always been seasonal, in my opinion. Um, you know, that there are times of year that there's just a lot more that needs to be done, whether it's annual reports or special editions, herd bull books, um, you know, there's just, you know, marketing going into to particular years or particular sales seasons. Um, there are times of year that, that your workload is crushing and, and you have to put the, uh, the big thing in the jar and focus on it and some of the other things have to, to fall by the wayside just to manage the surge. Um, so here we go. And I'm sure that uh, from time to time, we're all faced with those jobs that we really don't wanna do and we probably look a little bit like this kid. It's time to eat the frog. And um, you know, some of the, my approach to daily tasks and working that is simply jump in and do it. Eat the frog. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, sometimes there, there's just a lot there and we've got to get up and doing it. Uh, calendars are very important in my world. Um, every day I calendar, um, calendar's my friend. I use electronic calendars and I use um, a paper calendar just for the fact that sometimes that you're not always in front of um, electronic versions. Sometimes I have found I've been burned more than once by a phone that didn't sync. Um, so I'm, I use paper and electronic um, and I live by them regularly. Um, and every night before I go to bed is I start with a calendar check just to make sure that I know what's coming um, ahead of the day. And 
part of that um, relates back to my time at Grass and Grain with a weekly publication, um, that there wasn't necessarily a standard day, that there was meetings to cover or interviews to be had, um, and I needed to know where I was going the next day, that it wasn't a, a standard get up and go to the office that I needed to know whether I was going east or if I was going west or if I was going to the office. Um, in Manhattan, calendars are important and that was always the last thing um, that I did at the night before um, is check my calendar. Um, another point about calendars is the fact that if you have young children, um, Get the, and I'm a fan of Gmail for a couple of reasons, um, but Google calendars are your friend. Very young, I all my kids have uh, Gmail addresses as well. Um, I communicate with them via email, but I also, the older they got, the more I expected them to use Google calendars and put items on there that if they needed two dozen cookies for the bake sale for their class, they had best put it on the calendar because if it's not on the calendar, it's not happening. Um, same with sporting events. At one point in time, I had a kid in high school, a kid in junior high, and a kid in elementary school. And, um, you know, it was nuts, completely and thoroughly nuts. And it's one of those that uh, I feel like I have earned a badge of honor. Thank you very much. I survived those years um, because periods of uh, all three of them were playing on different sports teams. So practices, games, pictures, if it wasn't on the calendar, it didn't happen or I was not expected to be there. Um, and so honestly, it helped train them at a very young age to help with planning in their day. And um, my two oldest are in college now and um, my sophomore very much still uses his Google calendar and it's always interesting to see what he puts on it and uses it for and um, big test or study group. So those habits and skills that we started working on in elementary and junior high very much have carried through and I think it helps, uh, helps organize their lives. But calendar, calendar, calendar. Um, there's a couple others. I used Cozy for a while. Um, it also gives the family aspect, but we found that Gmail was um, a little more effective and and we liked its usefulness in there. A um, couple things about getting stuff done and working remote. Um, attire makes a difference. Um, you know when I was at Grass and Grain and at Red Angus I had the luxury of working in various locations and I found that the days that I needed to get the most stuff done if I had a really tall to-do list the days that I got up, hair, makeup, and professional dress, I got a lot more done. Um, you know, it's it's one of those uh, lures and and uh, perks, if you will, that you know nobody has to see you when you're working from a home office or remotely. Um, but it does send a subliminal message to your brain that you know we can take this down a notch, that if you've got to get stuff done and you have the opportunity to work remote, um, attire does make a difference. So get up and get stuff done and get dressed to do it. I spoke to calendars a little bit uh, there. Uh, there is no end of, of things there. And probably um, circling back to that to-do list, um, as you organize your day, as you organize things that need to be done, whether it's project or an ongoing, um, those things that you dislike the least, whether it's making return phone calls or editing, whatever that project is that you find the least savory, um, start with it, don't finish with it, because it's real easy to let stuff slide at the end of the day, um, particularly if it's not a task that you enjoy or are looking forward to, eat the frog start with that part of your day and get it over with because then um, the rest of your day will go a lot smoother and you'll you can check it off the list and feel that sense of accomplishment that I got it done and and this was all good um, and sometimes in all of our work lives whether you're working remote or in an office 
Um, you know, Christy talked about scheduling um, her day and what that looks like um, and notifications know that it is okay to shut off the phone and shut off the notifications um, and step into a no phone zone. Next slide. Um, you really do in this world um, have to set some boundaries for distractions. Um, I, when I was in a weekly situation, um, writing and editing, I scheduled time every day um, that I walked away from everything because I would probably follow along the lines of some of the creatives um, that Christy mentioned that sometimes it was too much that I, I could not um, I could not focus or get totally into the project um, if I did not shut those off so um, you know two hour chunks was not unusual for me to be completely isolated from social media my phone and everything else. Um, and a timer I have found particularly um, when you're working remote um, that you don't have the luxury, if you will, of some distractions, um, which is kind of be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but sometimes that time either stands stills or goes really flat. So uh, fast. So set your timer so you know what you've done and when you do it. and um, it's a little bit like Pavlov and training the dog. When the timer goes off, uh, you know, you're, you're on to the next thing. And it was always kind of a little personal race with me and a personal um, challenge to see what I could get done in two hours. A um, couple personal things that I've learned, um, you know, in this time there, as far as being productive, know what makes you tick. Um, for me, I need background noise not necessarily notifications and distractions, but I need something in the background. So music is my friend, um, Spotify, Apple Music, um, even resorted to the, you know, piped music in on that my cable provider uh, provides locally. Uh, I can use, I like music and it helps me uh, focus in there, but you have to know what your own personal work style is and probably it focused a little bit or began to start when you were in college. I mean, where did you like to study? Did you Were you a quiet room person or did you uh, get the most done when you were sitting in the lounge or at the student union and had lots of buzz around you and could really dial in? So know what, what works for you and don't be afraid to embrace that. Same goes um, with, and it comes down to kind of some personal family work-life balance. Uh, work early or work late. I'm a night owl that I would be much rather to work on a project after I got home from a ball game um, for a couple hours because I took off in the middle of the afternoon to watch my kids versus getting up early that morning and working on it ahead of going. Um, expand your work day, but know where you can function. If I had to write or edit something early in the morning, I could almost guarantee that I would be re-editing it and reworking on it the next day because it made no sense. So no, again, personal preference um, when you can function at your best. I'm a late night girl, so um, I never hesitated, if you will, to um, take advantage of the opportunity to watch my children participate in sports, but I also knew that I was gonna burn the midnight oil from 10 to 1 to finish up what I missed in the afternoon to keep things going. Um, and where I was working for a weekly newspaper, I didn't have a choice. The deadline was looming and away you go. And, and it was worth that sacrifice uh, of sleep to be active and participating in my children's lives. So expand your work day if you need to make that family work-life balance work. Next. And some days, you are just not going to win. And the best systems, um, the best time management, the best calendar is not going to save you. Just because in this world and in, in this business that um, it, uh, there, there is stuff that happens. Uh, emergencies, the cow that stole Christmas, um, you know, an outbreak of news, whatever that we're covering or asked to do, 
Um, some days they just totally break every system that we have. And so sometimes you're going to be like that girl and just face plant um, and be drug along. And that's just part of the experience. So a couple other um, little things as far as productivity goes. Um, don't discount the, the uh, value of changing your scenery if you're working on a big project that you're stuck on. Um, when I was working at remote, some days there was just days that I could not focus at home. So I found the coffee shops, McDonald's, bookstores, even just moving outside to my front patio sometimes really helped me get over a hump and eat a big project that was weighing me down. Um, have goals, have to-do lists. Christy spoke to those, and the brain dump is a great thing. Um, I do it daily, partly now because um, of my interactions with my various groups and donors that may want to support the FFA, and so I can't afford to, to lose those things and those conversations and those passing conversations. So I brain dump daily um, as far as who I talk to, who might be a good lead, who's um, who do I need to follow up with or who's not happy. Um, I do that daily. And, um, you know, if you are working remotely or changing your scenery up, make sure that it's not an excuse for backsliding. Make sure that you have Wi-Fi. Make sure you have the files you need. Make sure you can access beyond a firewall at some of those public locations because um, there's nothing worse than setting yourself up to work for a half a day someplace else and then getting there and 25 minutes into your session, you realize that it was not going to happen. You really um, wasted a day, and it may be hours that you didn't have to waste. Next. And hopefully what uh, Christy and I shared with you will help get you off to the races. Um, I'm known to some that are participating that I'm kind of a crazy goat lady and meat goats are my passion. So uh, I hope that uh, your little goat cart takes you to where you need to go and systems will uh, help you get the most out of your day and uh, make your work-life balance work and that you can find success and, and accomplish all that we need to do and hopefully do it in a focused manner. So with that. Thanks, Beth. Appreciate it. I love I love that last slide. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so Jennifer Ryan asks, can you define what brain dump is? And I think that would you both talked about brain dumps. So could you just explain what that is in a little more detail, please? Christy, you want to lead? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, so it's it's just getting all of the things in your head out of your head. Um, in a place that you can work through them is, is kind of how I look at that. And I love that Beth mm -hmm. does that daily. I, I probably would be better if I, did, <laughs> if I did that daily too. So that might be something I put into my last few minutes every day. And for me, you know, and it's one of those um, that it's my work now is very relational and personal and basis. And so um, it may just be a path passing comment. It may not have been something fully. So if I don't brain dump daily, um, it really it can get away from me just because it, the nuance that it was shared with me. Um, I see the question there about scheduling. I started when they were in fifth and sixth grade. A, I, um, if you have not say, I mean, I'm a pretty plain, straightforward person. I mean, my Gmail address is beth.riffle, which was my former married name. Um, all my kids have kyle.riffle, or Carl J. Riffle, all Gmail addresses. So A, I wanted to save them. Um, and so they were in, in grade school and junior high when we started that. And true that um, a lot of times um, until they got into junior high, and my kids go to technology-rich schools or when they started, so they had iPads and they had computer access every day, all day at school. Um, and so they were using some of that in their schoolwork. But even to the point of um, when they were really young in grade school, 
if they brought home that they needed cookies or if I had signed up for a classroom, I put it on their schedule and I color coded it so I could see what I needed for Kara, I could see what I needed for Kyle, and I could see what I needed for Carl. And, um, you know, over time they began, and it was probably in junior high that I asked them to put on their sports, I asked them to put on their practices, I asked them to put on their parties, and asked them to take ownership. Um, but I also took the liberty of, of adding things in there as well. And, um, you know, and it, and it tied in to some degree, um, you know, with my kids also, by the time they were in high school, were doing their own laundry. Um, because just because your sports uniform wasn't washed, that's not my problem. That was yours. Um, and they knew when they needed it. And so it, they began to, to rely on it for their own personal planning and what they needed to do, um, putting big projects on there, putting big trips. Um, my family's pretty active in livestock showing as well. So if there were shows that they decided that they wanted to go to or something, um, they put it on the calendar so we could all see and be on the same page and, and go from there. And sometimes shows conflicted with sports calendars. So when coaches were asking, you know, are you available this weekend to play? They could very easily pull it up on their smartphone and say, uh, coach, I won't be there or yeah, I'm available. So it gave them personal responsibility. When I, you know, when you were talking about that, it's something that I thought about that I, you know, I feel like you don't say everything and then you think of new things um, from like the calendar and scheduling outside of just personal stuff. I, you know, I know I talked a lot about a structured day. Um, I guess I, one thing I wanted to point out is that is not always feasible. <laughs> and so my, my thought there, um, you know, the days that I can come in and work through my days that way, obviously, are great. Um, but knowing that any calendar that you put together has to have flexibility, um, I, I get. I don't. I wish that my days ran like that every single week, but they just don't. <laughs> yeah. No. But at the same point in time, it's good to be intentional putting those things down there, um, so you don't overschedule yourself with optional things. And um, you know, working with teams as, as um, you know, I put on, the, you know, I blocked out every week um, when I was with Red Angus, when I was working on the e-news and, and was working on getting that out. And the rest of the team knew that I was not available on Wednesday morning for meetings because that was that was my big push for the day. Um, and so putting those things on the calendar, even if they're recurring and static and may be subject to change, is important because then it helps clue your team members in with the rest of your schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Casey, on your question on um, working remotely, um, so one, uh, we have designers on our team um, and they've always worked out of the office. Um, some of, most of our marketing team now is here in Haskell, but some of them are still in St. Joe. Um, and so, yes, we have to, <laughs> we have to communicate. So the things that we rely on, um, we've always kind of relied on our project management software. Um, part of that is, in the, the daily to-do to list. So I'm in charge of um, it kind of making sure that the, you know, the projects that need to happen, that all of the pieces of that are tasked out to our team. Um, so by entering them with due dates in that software, um, they kind of know like what they're supposed to come in and work on every day. And we can, you know, message and uh, back and forth like at, you know, Jamie at Christy um, when there's a question. So um, that, Asana software helps us a lot with that. And then, of course, there's the things that just fall in regular communication. And one of the, uh, we rely on Slack quite a bit for that. So um, if you're not familiar with Slack, it's really just an instant messaging software. Um, you can do private messages to, each, you know, to the members on the team. Um, you also have channels that can be open. So we have a channel for every um function of what we do. So we've got a social channel and a web channel, an events channel, an errors channel. Um, so if somebody comes across an error on social or on the website, they can alert the team, hey, there's an error and we need to get it fixed. Um, if they have an idea for social or they have, um, you know, like, hey, something's come up, you guys should share this. Or um, it just kind of keeps everyone in the loop. And it's very open communi communication. It's, um, it's made our team very transparent. Um, 
and not in, because it wasn't, but just because it really is hard to feel like you're keeping everyone in the loop enough when you're not all in the same place. Um, so that that's something, Slack is one of those tools that we've relied on quite a bit for that. Awesome. Well, I don't want to cut this off because this has been so great, but it is almost um, 11 o'clock, so sorry we went a little bit over, but it was so full of good information. Um, we really appreciate you guys taking time. I know this is a busy time of year, Beth and Christy, and um, thank you for fitting us in and for prioritizing this. And I hope that you guys will join us on some of our future coffee and collaborations. Um, we'd love to, to keep you guys involved. And again, this is going to be shared as a YouTube video um, as soon as it gets done um, processing. And I'll be sure to share that on our LPC social media sites. And with that, thank you guys again. And I hope you guys all have a great Wednesday. Thanks. Bye-bye, all. Bye.